How's it going, everyone? Austin and Clark here from AppSheet Training. We are live today. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about our inventory app for the auto industry. So we're excited um, to be live streaming today. How's it going, Clark? Oh, it's going pretty well. Yeah. It's been a weird morning. Uh, yeah. Just a lot of things coming at me from all directions, but no, yeah. it's been a pretty good day so far. I think, uh, I think this is going to be a fun webinar too. How are you, Austin? I'm doing great. Um, I'm excited about our little Tesla app sheet training. Um, Sponsorship? Yeah, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we got uh, Cameron designed a Tesla with our app sheet training characters on it. So looks pretty, pretty sweet. I wonder what you guys think about it. I'll, I'll show it to you in a minute, but you probably also saw it on the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be talking about our inventory app um, and kind of to get us started um, before we jump into the actual webinar, we've got a little icebreaker for everyone. Um, so this week's icebreaker is what features in AppSheet do you think set them apart from other no-code platforms and why? And what do you think, Clark? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, what features set AppSheet apart? Uh, I would say one thing that kind of sets them apart um, is their, well, now it's called uh, embedded view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, used to be called dynamic emails. Mm -hmm. um, but basically being able to send a view, send a screenshot of the application mm -hmm. uh, via email. Yeah. And the person be able to respond or change values directly from that email. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, I don't know. Oh, nice. what, what are your favorite things? Um, I like that the UX design is basically done for you. <laughs> uh, there's other no code platforms where you kind of get lost in the weeds of creating different UX features. Um, as far as like switching between desktop and mobile. And so I like that app sheet kind of takes care of that for you. It limits you in other ways, but because you don't have to worry about like right. adjusting the different views, it has all of that customized for you on like, here's typically what um, you would use in any kind of app. It has all of that laid out for you. So it's just pretty much like, um, it's not drag and drop, but it's select. <laughs> you can yeah. basically select your your view type that you want, where in other platforms you kind of have to, you have more customization, but you have to kind of play with it to get the designs you want. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Looks like we got some people joining in the chat. I just want to say <laughs> hi to everyone. Um, what's up, Ken and Aaron, Will and AB, the CTO. Let's see. He has a question. He says, when are the notifications coming to iPhone? Uh, honestly, you I didn't know what? that they weren't on iPhone yet. So yeah. to be completely honest with you. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Um, yeah, if they're not so, around there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the the timeline kind of looks like for that. Yeah, definitely something that we could ask the the AppSheet community, um, and maybe get some people from from AppSheet to to help us out with that answer on the timeline. We have, uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this person's name, would it be possible to learn more about different UX views, please? Dashboard. Sweet. Yeah, we're actually going to cover that today. Um, this app uses dashboard views um, primarily. That's all it uses is um, interactive dashboard views. Um, and then we also have a search view that we created that dynamically filters through the data so you can see specific items in your inventory. So great question. Um, and then Will says he likes the ability to take tabular data into a mobile app, having full control of your data on both sides. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, AppSheet's powerful um, and business automation. I When I first learned about AppSheet, I always compared it to like Google Slides. It's like you have a specific type of presentation that you want to make. So just I'm just going to make a new slide template for that. Um, and when I discovered AppSheet, I was like, oh, I've got this task that I need to automate. I'm going to make an app just 
to automate this task real quick. So the versatility of it is just awesome. Sweet. Well, looks like we got some people um, hopping in. Let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling with our live stream today, our webinar. I'm going to go ahead and hide that banner for us. So welcome to our monthly webinar. Got our Tesla car all, um, uh, how do we, how do we say, like, uh, we got it all covered in our AppSheet training logos and our AppSheet training characters. So that's fun. And we're going to be going over our inventory app this week. Um, so let's jump into our content. Um, our agenda for today is we're going to be reviewing an inventory app use case. We're also going to be creating an inventory app. Clark's going to kind of show you how to uh, create some of those key features um, within this app. And he'll kind of give you a developer's perspective on why we built some of the things the way we did, and then even some improvements to make. Um, we meet um, to kind of sync up about these. Um, these apps and I'm the one that's making the app. And then Clark has his own um, developer advice that he'll um, give give me to kind of help us make a more well-rounded app to present to you guys. Um, so we'll kind of take you behind the scenes um, of some of the things that we improved on this app. And um, Clark will give you his perspective on why um, it might be better for the end user for it to be built this way. Um, and then we'll talk about our live Q&A at the end and answer some of you guys' questions. And this is very conversational um, webinar. So I would like you guys to treat it like a consulting session with Clark. If you've got apps that you're working on right now and you want direct feedback from a developer, um, definitely um, ask those questions in the chat and we can um, have that conversation and try to uh, show you how to build that out on this live stream today. All right. And then um, our objective by the end of this webinar, you're gonna learn how to create your own inventory app without needing a background in computer science or software development. So this is AppSheet training. We're gonna show you how to use this awesome no-code platform um, and build the things that you wanna build quickly and efficiently. Uh, before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank our channel sponsor, uh, Forms to Docs. This is a rules-based document creation platform. Um, they capture forms and information electronically in robust forms. They automatically generate those PDF and Word documents based on this information. You can store, edit, copy, and share these documents with unlimited user licensing. Sign up risk-free for a free custom demo using your data. They're gonna set up your first template for you. 90 days, no questions asked, guarantee. You can click the link right here um, to learn more information. This slide deck is in the description below. And there's also a link to go directly to Forms to Docs. Highly recommend Forms to Docs, a product of Paperwork Pros. Thank you guys. All right, so let's take a look at our inventory use case. So today we're gonna be um, looking at how an inventory process typically works. So um, historically, it's, it's usually been like a manual process. So if you're maybe in the new stages of trying to create an automated process, maybe you're using a manual process right now, which involves a lot of paperwork, multiple forms, um, trying to track all this different inventory as well as items, and then searching through all that, sending emails to notify managers or admin of, hey, we're out of stock in this item. Can you please um, send a change order in so that way we can get some more items um, in stock. And then maybe you're having to take those paper forms and manually load them into a computer or a database or a spreadsheet. Um, and so it's just, there's just like a lot of repetitive process um, with this uh, type of system, type of business process. Um, and sometimes it leads to incomplete data entry, unclear inventory amounts. Um, so it can, it can get kind of scattered. Um, so what we want to do, what we want to show you guys is the power of AppSheet and how easy it is to create an automation workflow with AppSheet. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So with AppSheet, you can easily track multiple items, calculate the amount of stock. It's all in a centralized data location. So you can search for things as well as send email reports when stock is going to get too low. So if you need more tires or if you need more radios, or um, steering wheels, um, like we have a picture of here. Any of those items, 
Um, if they get under 10, we'll show you how that logic works in just a minute. Um, that's all going to be processed within AppSheet. All of the employees will have one centralized system to use. Um, and the form is standardized. So you don't have to worry about incomplete data entry or um, miscounting records. You can even set up barcode scanning in here. And we'll take a look, a quick look at what that looks like. Um, so, you know, the possibilities with AppSheet are pretty much endless. It's just up to your own um, knowledge, training, um, and then your creativity, what you want to do with the app. Um, and so now we have a little use case diagram here that just shows you the user interface is going to be with that AppSheet app. Our database is Google Sheets. Um, so most people are familiar with using Google Sheets. We look at Google Sheets as kind of like a database. Um, and we'll show you some best practices for how to design your Google Sheets um, to integrate with AppSheet uh, correctly. And then we have all of our information um, that people are interacting with and everything's done through AppSheet. So very systematic uh, business system. So that way more things can get done and you can get back to doing what you, uh, what you love doing. All right, so what is an inventory app? So our inventory app is gonna be commonly used to track inventory items in one centralized location. So we'll, in just a moment, we'll take a look at all the uh, components that we have built into this inventory app and how to create this inventory app. We're gonna have the main tables that you need is that mm -hmm. item table and the inventory table. These are the main two relation relational data structure that you're gonna need. Um, this one also has a user table and that's for admin um, so that they can search their reports um, as well as send those automated emails. So if you ever wanna do email automation in any of your AppSheet apps, make sure you have a user table. I also like to call them team tables, um, but whatever you wanna call it, um, as long as you have a table where you can list users um, for the app, that's really helpful for sending those email automations and creating like dynamic expressions within your email automation. Next, you're gonna just connect that database to AppSheet. AppSheet will kind of create the app for you um, and it will be pretty much ready to go um, as soon as you connect it from Google Sheets. But then after that, what we like to do is customize it even further, uh, make sure the UX is optimized so that the end user um, knows how to use the app correctly. It's very intuitive, it's user-friendly. Um, and so we'll take a look at how to customize that in this, in this webinar. All right, let's do a demo of this app. If you wanna get access to this app, um, in the description below, there's a quick reference guide that you can click on. And when you click this link, um, it will navigate you to our um, portfolio, which is over here. And this is the template app that you um, can use and you can copy and customize it by clicking that button right there. And then this will be your, your app to take. It's our gift to you. Um, and so use it, um, use the components of it and, and then work along with us as we're building out this, this app today. Um, and then you can use the expressions in here to kind of copy and paste um, to your own workflows. All right, let's do a quick demo of some of the key features of this app. So um, the first view that we start out with is our items view. So these are all the items in stock for our auto shop. Um, and so we have our exterior parts, our interior parts, and our accessories. Um, so, um, and this, I think somebody mentioned earlier about our um, dynamic views. Um, so for our dynamic views here, um, this is a dynamic dashboard. So we have a item type view, which is, I believe these are both, this is a deck view. And then this over here is a card view with the list. Um, and so what, what it's doing is it's selecting this parent record and it's associated um, item type. And so the, or item rather. So here's our item type and it's filtered by um, exterior, interior and accessories. And then it shows you only those records that you're clicking on. And so now we can see, okay, we have eight radios, we have 15 uh, tire bearings, four tires and 20 vehicle frames, right? So we can just quickly uh, glance at how many items we have in stock. Um, and so the next step is how do we uh, calculate the inventory? 
So we have this log inventory change action button that we've made and we'll show you how to create this as well. And then this one uses just a simple slider. Okay, and it's just gonna track, okay, today's date time um, is how it's gonna know um, when to make that change. So we're making it right now and let's set it to, um, we, we gained uh, 10 radios uh, today. So now we've, we have more radios. Okay, so now we see that stock increased to 18. Um, and then you can see the change log right here um, as well. And we see that reflected there. So that was the record that we just created. Um, and then AppSheet is automatically summing that amount for us here. Um, alternatively, let's say we sold some radios today. We're gonna sell uh, 20 radios. Um, and so this is gonna decrease it to minus two. So now we have negative records um, and we can sync that. Uh, another cool feature of this app is it's gonna send an automated email report to the admin which will look like this if stock is um, getting low. This is a old one, so it's not reflected of the, the current change, but the email did get sent to admin. But as you can see, it shows an inventory report, what the item was, the image and the name, a brief description of it, and then how many are remaining, who added that change. and what uh, Austin, you probably want to zoom in just a little bit. Okay, thank you. Let me, thanks Clark. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. All right, so here's the, the email report that gets sent to admin. So they know, okay, I'm getting low on car seats. I need to probably order some more um, before we run out of stock like we did with the radios. Um, okay, so we can go back here and then let's say we ordered some more radios. Now we have um, 11 radios and then that increases our stock back up to nine. Okay, um, and then here's the inventory log again. So we can quickly filter through um, our different item types. Um, you might also wanna call these categories. That's also a good name for um, this view right here. Um, and so that's just a basic view of the changes that we made for each each record. Um, and then finally over here, we have our uh, stock view. It's kind of just a chart view that filters through the, the different parts and you can kind of see it more visually with a graph. Um, and then you can also filter it as well. Um, this is using the new chart feature. So it allows you to um, have this little um, scroll at the bottom, which is pretty cool feature. I'm a huge data guy, so I love the data visualization right here. And this one works really, really good. Um, sometimes uh, I have a little bit difficult time finding a good data visualization in AppSheet, but I like, I like that one a lot. Um, okay, and then last little demo before we get into the build of the app. Um, this is our search filter. So this is a custom search. This is probably one of the most advanced features that we demo here on AppSheet Training. Um, so when we're demoing this um, for the for creating this type of view, um, if, if you're unclear about how the expression works and stuff, please uh, comment in the chat so that we can answer those questions because um, it, it uses some pretty complex expressions um, and slices to filter out this data. Um, so what this is doing is you can select the item that you want and it's gonna filter the searched items as well as their inventory logs. Um, and so you can search through and you can select multiple items because this is an enum list right here. And then you can also select the date range. So let's say we wanna search as 5.30, the start date, and then we'll select 5.16. So you can see it took off that last record right there. Um, and now we are only viewing um, records between this date and time range, and then also um, with these item types selected. So this is a cool feature if you're like an employee and you need to quickly see um, how many items we have in stock or an admin. Um, I really like this this type of feature. And then um, this 
this concept is talked about in our um, UX course that we I'll show you at the end um, where uh, Ben goes into a full detail of how to create these types of features. Okay, and then I have like a little mm -hmm. reset button that just resets everything back. Um, and so that's our inventory. Yeah, there's kind of a lot going on here. So I want to make sure Clark has enough time to demo all these <laughs> things to you guys. Um, and then we can answer questions as well. All right, so Clark, um, you can take it away, man. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. Um, I need to share this. <clears throat> All right, so you should be able to see my screen. Everything should look good. Can everybody read all the text? Uh, also, I know that there's been a lot of questions in the chat. I've tried to kind of give some brief answers. Um, <clears throat> I should be able to go into a little bit more depth uh, later in the webinar. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you do have more questions, feel free to uh, continue posting. Um, so... Cool. So this is that application, just like Austin was talking about. Um, to be honest, there are so many, there's so many more things that I wanted to do for this app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was just going to be too much time mm -hmm. uh, trying to explain everything. It would have been yeah. just a three hour lecture uh, yeah. instead of, you know, more of this talking, talking, chill. Yeah. Uh, Conversational format. style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, you can't but, have cool, cool lo-fi music in a lecture. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I really like your name, Austin. <laughs> Did you change my name? <laughs> How'd you change my name? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't even know. I changed my name back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forever. All right, all right. <laughs> um, that's funny. Okay, um, before we jump into uh, your your demo real quick, Clark, I did want to yeah. share with everybody the the functional requirement that Clark's going to be demoing first. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. Um, so um, to kind of give you guys a frame of reference of where Clark's going to go um, first, I like to start everything out on the database side, um, so you can kind of see the data structure and how a developer um, kind of thinks through the whole app development process from beginning to end and why we have uh, certain tables and data sets um, structured the way they are. Um, so Clark's going to show you this data structure and maybe even tweak some things um, to show you guys how um, a well-developed relational database looks. Um, so for this app, we have created a database for tracking items and inventory. And so we have that team table, the item type table, the item table, inventory table, also an admin table or a search table. All right, Clark, back to you. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> All right, yeah, so just like Austin was saying, uh, I am gonna take us back here um, into our, oh, great. Let me log back in. I've been working on this profile all morning. <laughs> yeah, logged out. Uh, cool. So we have a, a couple of pretty simple tables. Um, they're definitely like not super. I don't know, beefed up. Sometimes, sometimes I have tables that are uh, pretty insane. Um, but hopefully, if we can see. Yeah. So <clears throat> pretty simple stuff here. We have uh, email. This is going to be our primary key for our team or user table um, and no other foreign keys. Then we have our image types. Um, and so really what this is, is it's just a way to associate um, a, a label and a picture to a grouping, um, which I think can be, can be really nice. Um, if things are uh, grouped by a name and an image, then you're able to, um, <clears throat> I don't know, I think it looks pretty clean, to be honest. Um, so both of these two columns have to be the labels. So you'd have the key in column A, and then B and C would both be the label. Uh, remember, labels can be uh, only one thing unless it is 
also an image. So you can have text and an image. Uh, then we have our items table. So this is going to be just some brief descriptors, uh, purchase cost, sales price, um, and then a brief description, like you said, uh, as well as another image. So this will also be these two, no, these two, uh, columns C and D should be our labels for this table. <clears throat> right. Um, and then we also have our item type ID. So uh, essentially like being able to, if you have that item type table, you're actually kind of more or less able to have two text columns and two image columns as your labels. Uh, and so that could be pretty cool. Okay. Then we have our inventory table, um, which I think a better description, better naming convention uh, is actually uh, a change log mm -hmm. um, for this specific table. So what this table is, is it documents when it changes for a certain item, when the inventory changes for a certain item. So if we sell 20 car seats this week, we can input that in the app. It's going to show that minus, minus 20, uh, like this one here. <clears throat> if we order 21 of them, it's going to populate here. Um, and we're going to use a pretty standard expression um, in our items table to get like a remaining inventory count. Um, <clears throat> so that could be really nice. Uh, and then our search stuff, uh, this is how we're basically doing the uh, that custom dashboard, so to speak. Um, mm. And I can explain how that kind of looks in here in a second. But... Um, as you see, pretty, pretty basic app. I'll zoom in too much. So tad, um, pretty cool app. Uh, I believe that this should be interactive. Yeah. So if I click on these item types on the left, I'm able to see, uh, those individual things, uh, here as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, this custom search, this is what I was talking about. In fact, I'm going to open this up here. Let's make this big, big. Yeah. Yeah. For the custom search, it's kind of like a desktop it's, it's view. It's definitely better as a desktop view. Mm. So let's rearrange some things. All right. That looks a little bit better. <clears throat> so this was that uh, custom search thing uh, that we were talking about moment moments ago. Um, and so it allows us to basically select what we want to see in these other views. Um, so this is in fact an interactive dashboard, I believe. Uh, actually this one is not because it's not, oh, because I wanted this. to be able to click mm -hmm. on stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. And to make sure. Th so like, let's say, uh, employee entered the wrong inventory items and an admin wants to go in and make that change, make that adjustment, um, yeah, as he's right. doing his checks, he can go back in there and update that record, yeah. um, from this view. The reason why, even though it's not an interactive dashboard, the reason why that we're able to to kind of interact with it uh -huh. uh, without clicking into stuff is because this is a, actually a detail view. Yeah. Um, and we have quick edits on. Yeah. So that's all we're doing is we're doing quick edits on the columns. So before I had nothing under my, under Epic Greece, uh, this one. Now you can see I have some item IDs and I have, uh, I don't have any search states yet, but. Yeah, so if he resets it, um, you'll see, so, yeah, you'll see that there. reflected in the table. Yeah, so yeah, that reset, I actually do like this feature. I haven't done that before, um, but I do think it's a really, really neat feature being able to just reset your, uh, oh, do you have that doing that for everyone or just, just the person? No, just the person. Okay. Yeah, that <clears throat> it's because that other one doesn't have any information in it. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty neat stuff there. Uh, like I said, I'm actually a huge fan of the way that Austin has set this app up. Uh, it's just it's just pretty clean. Um, now, as I was telling him, there was a, there's so many more things that I want to do mm -hmm. uh, to make this you know a little bit more beefy, yeah. so to speak. Um, <clears throat> but it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can we take a look at <clears throat> how to create the, <clears throat> excuse me, the amount remaining um, feature? Yes, we can. That's like the the main thing that you'll want in your inventory apps. Um, when you're, I mean, the main purpose of it is just to track how much, um, 
how many items you have. So this is how you would create that feature in AppSheet. So for reference, we, we have this as our uh, secondary header, I believe is what this is in our deck view. Yeah. Uh, so the, we have 15 tire bearings, we have 20 vehicle frames, four tires. That is that amount remaining column. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so amount remaining. Um, oh, actually, I don't like this group by to be honest, but uh, <laughs> so we have this amount remaining column. This is a virtual column in this instance. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, in fact, if you have a lot of data um, and maybe you have a security filter or uh, maybe you're using a SQL database that's only pulling a certain amount of rows, uh, you probably don't want to use a virtual column. Uh, you probably want to use a static column um, so that you can have uh, values that uh, you don't have to go back two years in order to get the correct uh, inventory sum. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the expression for, for a small app like this. This is great. Um, <clears throat> pretty simple. So we have the sum expression. Some expression is going to take a list and add them together. Uh, it does need to be new numbers of some kind. Uh, mm -hmm. So it can be a decimal, it can be a price, it can be, uh, you know, just a number. But uh, they need to match. Those types need to match in the list. Uh, so what we did was we did a select expression. We're going to look at the inventory table and we're going to pull the amount that we have. Could you zoom in just a little bit, Clark? I could, but then I don't want to. Oh, <laughs> you're showing. Uh, yeah. So we have our amount here. Mm -hmm. um, and then our condition is where the item ID is equal to this row, that item ID. Mm -hmm. Right, so seems kind of confusing, um, but I promise it, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's going to look at our inventory table, mm -hmm. uh, which remember is basically a change lock of some of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, so if we look at this, this should be sorting, uh, descending. Mm -hmm. And so we bought 16 of these, we bought 45 of these, we sold 10 of these. Um, and so it's going to look at all of the ones for, let's say I want to look at only steering wheels. Oh, I want to look at only steering wheels. Oh, we only have one. Okay, let's change it to something else. Here we go, tire bearings. So we, we bought 25 of them. Somehow we sold 30, 35 more than we, or 30 more than we had. Uh, <laughs> so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had, we bought 45 more. Um, so that total would leave us at 15. Um, as you can see, that is the correct number. I promise I didn't cheat. I'm just really good at math. So. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> that's some pretty good math right there, Clark. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so that's what it's doing is it's, it's looking, um, it's basically looking at these, uh, mm -hmm. whichever ones have the same item ID <clears throat> and it's going to sum those numbers together to give us that total. Yeah. Uh, so it's a pretty simple expression. There's a ton more you can do with those selects uh, using ands and ors. Um, so if you haven't tried doing those things, definitely recommend every single app I use has some type of select expression. Mm -hmm. um, every single app I use uses this row. Yeah. Because uh, I can think you, this row Can you talk between. a little bit about why we have to use the select here rather than just like doing a simple um amount minus you know like why can't we just do um amount minus the next record's date time or not date time but minus the next record's amount um is that making um, sense like why can't we just use a simple math operator rather than why do we have to use a select expression right uh, uh, yeah. so actually you don't actually have to use a select expression mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to. Okay. Um, the other way that you could actually write this out, uh, I can't see my things. So I'm going to add another virtual column. Okay. <laughs> uh, sum of inventory. Look, I don't remember what the other one's called. So this is what yeah. I'm calling this one. Cool. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, 
you could also do a sum. Uh, and honestly, I don't know what this is called. It's kind of like a, a DREF, but it's like a list of DREFs. Yeah. Um, so we have a column in here that's that's that related record, right? So we right. have this inventory log is what this is called. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, whenever you have a related virtual column, it's going to say something like related inventory logs yeah, uh, or something like that. Uh, that's not the case for this one. But so you have that. Um, and then instead of there's no period here, I know that this. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is a pretty cool. Was... This is a pretty cool feature. So if you know about D references, you can like go into other tables. Um, we like to call the the period or the dot a a little portal. Um, what Clark is able to do because we have that reference um, is you don't have to use yeah. the D reference. So that, I mean, that's the whole expression. That right okay. there means the exact same thing as this. Sweet. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways that you can get the information that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it really just kind of depends on your your own knowledge and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and what you're willing to to kind of do. Sweet. Um, okay, we did have a the reason why. Question. Go ahead. Yeah. So you asked why we have to use a select or mm -hmm. in that case, the reference rows, mm -hmm. uh, because they are in different tables. Um, without that reference column, there's no other way for us to actually pull uh, that related data. Right. Um, yeah. So like, it's because we want it to be dynamic, because we want to be able to pull all rows associated with that item, mm -hmm. um, we do have to use a, some type of expression uh, in order to pull those values. Perfect. All right. And then we did have a question. This is a good one. Um, should be pretty simple. How do you add inventory on the app? Um, so How do you add inventory. Yeah. So basically you're just going to go to the item, <clears throat> the items view. Um, yeah. <laughs> and from here you will need to, um, open up the items view. Another thing that you could do is to kind of upgrade this app to make it easier for yourself to add is you could show um, overlay actions um, mm -hmm. on these dashboard views. Um, I did not do that just because it looks a little bit cleaner for um, the demo purposes. But if you haven't seen in dynamic views, you can actually click at the top. If you can demo that real quick. You're saying this? Yeah. Yep. And that'll take you into that item card view. And then your overlay action is there. So then you can now click the add button. Yeah. See, I actually prefer this one. That That is the change log. Um, if right, you wanted to add... Button. No. So I think they're asking if they want to add new inventory. So if you have a new item oh, that you want to okay. add. Yeah. I, I that, that's mean. how I interpreted the question. No, yeah, I think, the, I think yeah. you're right. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. This would be how to add new inventory items. Yeah. Um, and I believe this one has barcode scanning. Does it have the little barcode on there, on the ID column up there, Clark, or no? Uh, I don't see one. Okay. It, it may have. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's one. I can't on believe there. you took it off. Unbelievable, Austin. <laughs> But yeah, so that's the that's the item form right there. Um, so if you want to add new kinds of inventory, um, you would go to the item form. Um, and then Clark, if you want to show how to add those overlays on. Um, you mean the, the actions? Yeah, the overlay actions on the dashboard view. Yeah. So kind of transition us into UX design. Um, so this so, is where this is where you get into like um, what functional requirements do I want for my users? Um, and this is where you can st kind of start customizing the app to your use case. Um, so these yeah. are great questions. Um, um, so that that specific one that we had, um, this add button, um, mm -hmm. it is a system generated action, which yeah. I mean, you don't have to use theirs, but you know, it's there if you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, you are gonna wanna make sure that that does have display overlay on. Um, if, if not, then you're not going to see it. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to go to your UX options, and then we're going to scroll down to dashboard, which is here. <clears throat> and then there's just a simple toggle that says, hey, we want to show overlay actions in our dashboards. Mm -hmm. um, so now you'll have this ad over here. Uh, we still don't have it over there, but... Uh, That's the inventory log. Um, oh, right. You, yeah. And there it is. So yeah. now you have ads in both. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, I don't like it as much on my dashboard views, uh, mm -hmm. unless it's a CSV download yeah. button. Mm -hmm. uh, I do I do like to have those on my dashboards. Yeah. Um, but typically, mm -hmm. typically I don't uh, put those on. Sweet. All right, let's keep moving along. I'm going to go ahead and show the next functional requirement right here. Um, and then I'll give it back to you, Clark. All right, so functional requirement number two, talking about creating custom views and navigation. So this app utilizes those dashboard views. So we'll take a look at how to create those. And those three views that we're gonna create are the inventory log, items, stock, and also an admin report or um, what we've renamed to be called custom search. Um, Cause that's kind of what it's more typically used right. for in this app. Um, and so I will let Clark take over. So if you guys got have questions about UX design and what you're looking for in an inventory app, please start adding those in the chat. Um, that way we can get those features um, talked about during this live stream. Yeah. Uh, really quick, <clears throat> I didn't see this question before. Yeah. Uh, could you show us how to disable the add and edit button in the inventory change log? Uh, I kind of just said stuff, but I didn't go completely into it. Yeah. Uh, there's two ways that you can effectively do this stuff. Uh, number one, you can actually hide it. So you can select do not display mm -hmm. on the system generated action. Um, alternatively, you can go into the behavior and you can add a condition. <laughs> this condition can be whatever you want it to be. For instance, false. <laughs> That's a great condition. Uh, so that just means that this action will never show up mm -hmm. um, and no one can ever use it. I mean, no one, if, if the condition is, is not true for these, you can't even see them in the application. Uh, so sometimes that's what I do if I just want to hide a system generated action. Um, that also works on inline uh, related views. Uh, so if you have if you have an inline view, that has, if you'll see it at the bottom right, it says like view, and then it says add. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, remove those things uh, by hiding or changing the condition of those actions. So for this one, it would be add or the view ref is essentially what that is. Uh, that uh, view all, whatever. Uh, cool. Um, so uh, I can't remember what you wanted me to do, Austin. What did you want me to do? Oh. <laughs> Um, so next we're just going to talk about how to create the dashboard views, um, kind of walking through, you got to create the, the standard card views and deck views that you want to filter through and then how to, um, then, uh, combine those views into one view. Um, right. yeah. And then, uh, we'll also cover a little bit of the, the actions. Um, so particularly the inventory change log action and what that looks like. Uh, so the creating the custom search featuring, uh, it, it seems pretty complicated. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. Yeah. Um, when I first saw something similar, I was pretty dumbfounded. Uh, <laughs> but this is the expression that basically makes this thing run. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a beast. Um, we have shown this, these types of expressions before on the channel. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you could, you might reference some of those videos, uh, yeah. for more context. Uh, but essentially what you need to know is that this one right here, it's just saying, if this is blank, if the start date, under, if the start date in the filtering is blank, show everything. Otherwise only show stuff in the start date range. Right. Uh, if this one is the same thing, if the end date is blank, then show everything. Otherwise, show only things that are before the end date. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one is, if the item 
So if this section item ID is blank, that's why we still have stuff over here. If this is blank, then just show everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, only show things that are inside of the item ID column. Um, and so, like I said before, that's this. This is item ID, start date, end date. That's yeah. what we're actually manipulating when we're playing around with our filter. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so this is ut utilizing, this is not necessarily an interactive dashboard. This is um, a bunch it's of different- more views. interactive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is more interactive. It really is. It's not the toggled one. It's a it's custom built logic yeah. that um, allow. And the thing I really like about this one is it uses an enum list, so you can select multiple records, and it's taking that data and loading it into a new table. So it's you know making that reference, and then allowing you to see based on the slice uh, filters that we've set up here. Um, to show and hide certain records based on your um, your quick edit view that you're making. Yep. All right. Um, and then can you show like the simple um, dashboard view on like a step-by-step -step walkthrough of like, um, let's, let's just do the item type table, um, like um, from start to finish, what, what would it look like to create the, the item create type? The actual views. Mm -hmm and then um, the detail records and you can use the ones that are on here um, but just showing like um here's the item yeah for sure yeah um so we have inventory search search and search let's just do that that is the custom view one the custom search one. Oh, uh, what did you want uh the items oh you wanted to see yeah. these views yeah, yeah I, sure, I think sure. there's a couple questions in here about how to just create a simple one so we can start with that one first so i'm going to show this screen just so it, it looks a little bit bigger you can kind of see it yeah. uh, this is the interactive dashboard uh, so a si slightly simpler uh, version of the dashboard that we were just looking at mm -hmm. uh, but essentially whenever you click on one of these it's going to only show uh, that grouping on the right, uh, right. so in order to do that uh, we do have two uh, views here. We have an item type and the item card, uh, which I believe is not system generated. That's definitely something that Austin wrote. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so we, you have to have this thing selected in order to um, essentially use it as an interactive dashboard. If it's not selected and you click on something, it's going to take you to the details of that thing. Mm -hmm. That is not what we want. Right, so we want uh, we want this to almost always be interactive uh, for stuff like this. Right. Um, now there's two views in here. I can click on the top and look at each one. So we have our item type. This is simply a deck view. Uh, it's just going to show all the records we have in this in this view. Um, so it's this one. As you can see, we have three records. And if I look in here, there's three records. That's pretty pretty simple, if you ask me. Um, you're almost always going to have a ref type for your dashboard views, um, unless you are for some reason using it somewhere else. But typically I see these as refs. Um, so that way the only way that people can get into these views is through the dashboard. Um, simple, very, very simple view options, literally nothing in here. Um, so yeah. that's pretty nice. Uh, and then our last, our other view is our item card, uh, which we have a display name for, uh, but I can pull that view open. Again, another ref view. This one does have some sorting conventions. Uh, we have grouping by the item type ID. Um, I'm actually gonna turn this off because I hate it. <laughs> uh, I don't like the fact that it's grouping it's, those numbers together that just doesn't mm -hmm. make sense logically uh, yeah. to me <laughs> uh, which honestly i might have done yes two days ago whenever we worked on this yeah uh, and i just can't remember but um but yeah we have a simple uh this is a card view mm -hmm. uh but we selected this list layout uh which is pretty nice and then if you click on it, it goes to the details um 
but you could put any action you wanted in there. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if it's interactive, nothing happens whenever you click on it. Um, it only affects the dashboard. So keep that in mind. Um, but we have our display. So this is where the display name would be. Interesting. You don't have a display name, but I don't see that yeah. space in there. Yeah. I'm going to change it because it's going to bug me. <laughs> yeah. Even if we can't see the change, me knowing that that underscore is behind there somewhere, yeah. uh, it's going to bug me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty yeah. much all that you need to know for building out these views. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, dashboard a, views are pretty simple as long as you have that data structured yes. correctly. Oh man, I cannot tell you how important data structure is in AppSheet. I'm sure yeah. that I'm sure we've all had those days where nothing goes right. Yeah, <laughs> I had one two days ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, pretty fun stuff. Uh, these custom search filters are a game changer. Um, I would definitely, I definitely recommend uh, t trying this out. Um, now that that being said, there are some cool things you can do uh, without this. So um, I think we is let's see uh, preview new features right here. Uh, so I believe that this has to be on in order for you to see some of this stuff. Um, but if I open up just this page with everything highlighted, uh -huh. uh, you can actually do a filtering thing here. Um, oh, cool. And so uh, it's kind of similar. Um, yeah. it, it does have the start and date range kind of filtering system that you could kind of set. Um, oh, that is... That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. So, um, very nice. It's not the most like sometimes I, I mean I haven't seen too many bugs with this specific feature, uh -huh. um, but I mean when you compare this to uh, this, I think this looks way cleaner. This Kanban style type yeah. view uh, just looks way better to me. Mm -hmm. um, but just know that uh, you you do have that functionality. If you are in a deck or a table view, you can use those those filterings. Very uh, cool. In a dashboard, you can. So yeah, uh, sweet. But yeah, that should be it. All right. Um, I'm actually going to move past our functional requirement number three because I want to show you guys. There's an automation here, and we did have a question um, in our chat. So I'm going to go ahead and move us into our <clears throat> live Q and A portion. That way, we have time for that. Um, and, um, one of the questions in our chat, um, was wondering about how to walk through, um, an email automation in app sheet. So Clark, if you want to show them the email automation, um, for this app, um, and just kind of walk them, do like a speed run walkthrough of, of this email automation. Oh, you want me to speed run it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we do have a bot here. Uh, I believe that this is a, a data change ads only. Um, and so what this does, uh, this bot here is actually here. Let's, let's just create a new bot. I can show you the whole process. Uh, so creating a new bot, everything has to have a name. That's, that's just kind of how this stuff works. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily need it, I guess, but it does make it easier later to kind of understand what you're working with. Uh, so new demo bot. So now we can add an event name, check for low inventory. So you could have this run on a data change. That means something happens in the data. Uh, this row before does not equal this row after, etc. cetera. Um, that's going to be your data change stuff. I'm actually going to make this one a schedule. Uh, so I want this to run daily and I want it to run at uh, 8 a.m. 
Um, and I am not UTC. We're going to change this to Central Time because that's where the best time is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So now we can define a process. You can do this by just adding a step in here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to send a text, which I don't even know if you have found out. Sometimes, sometimes it's buggy. I don't think that's actually how it's supposed to be, but it could be wrong. <clears throat> uh, so now it's going to text Austin. Again, not his real phone number, mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to text him. In fact, let's spam him at 2 a.m. <laughs> hey, these inventory items are low. Hey, wake up. <laughs> Time to wake order up. inventory. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's more or less uh, start to finish on these on these automations. Um, I would recommend naming as many things as you can, even though it is exhausting. Uh, it feels really, really repetitive. Yeah. Uh, it does. It does help. Uh, it can be helpful uh, if you are having some issues with mm -hmm. with different things. Yeah. Um, SMS, text to Austin to wake him up. <laughs> so, Clark's having some fun. Oh, I, <laughs> anytime I can mess with Austin, that's how you it's know a it's good, a good day. It's a good day. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, and then that other one is actually on a data change. Um, so there's another bot in there. And the way that one works is it just looks at the record. Um, and once that record is less than 10, um, it's going to send an email report like the one you saw at the beginning of the webinar. Um, so yeah, that's um, pretty much email automation um, wrapped up really quickly. Um, but if you want to learn more about AppSheet training and how we can help you, um, let me know in the chat. Um, we'll quickly review what we covered right now. Um, I'm going to share my screen now, Clark, if that's okay. Uh, really, really quick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can keep sharing your screen, but uh, DJ Flex Kid, uh, yeah. you were asking about actionable notifications. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually do some things. Uh, if you have an embedded, I'm actually going to steal this back. Just kidding. Yeah, you're good. Um, if you change this to an embedded app view, mm -hmm. um, you can uh, have people actually manipulate your data um, straight from their email. And then yeah. you can run those workflows or not workflows. You can run those automations uh, off of those data changes. And it works yeah. just like it would in AppSheet. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to open the application. So hopefully that it kind of answers your question. Uh, I would I would mm -hmm. recommend having some um some uh basically workflow triggers automation triggers in your mm -hmm. in your data and your back end uh yeah. those are those are pretty helpful mm -hmm. but i i love dynamic emails or what are they called now clark embedded app views embedded app views i use them every day um for he creating does. content He's a nerd <laughs> <laughs> i i'm an app sheet nerd i love i love using app sheet um but yeah those are um my favorite use cases for um dynamic templates or dynamic emails or embedded templates are um like approvals and requ requests <laughs> if i can get that word out um so that's kind of app sheets recommended best case scenario for using that um that system but i'd, I'd love to hear what other creative ways you guys are using dynamic emails and uh, embedded templates um Cool. So um, let's review. We're kind of wrapping up our time here. We looked over our use case on what the inventory app looks like um, that we created. And then we showed you guys um, kind of some key features and how to make those on your own. And then we had some time for live Q&A. So we kind of bounced around a little bit today um, just because I wanted to make sure that we were answering you guys' questions and getting you all the information that's relevant for your use case. Um, so um, we still had like quite a bit of questions that we weren't able to get to. So if you guys are interested in learning more, just uh, throw it in the chat. Yeah, I want to learn more about AppSheet training and how it can help me automate my workflows. I'll give you some time um, to throw those comments in the chat because I'd love to share with you a little bit about how we can help um, you automate your workflows um, with AppSheet training. So I'll give you guys some time um, to throw those. Um, yes, I'd like to learn more in the chat. Um, and be ready to share share what we got um, to help you guys out.
just enjoying that lo-fi music. Oh yeah, and, no, I've been jamming. Yeah, I've been jamming awesome. Yes, it's so chill. It's so it's so. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty relaxing. I'm telling you, this morning was stressful. Yeah. So it's not often that you go on to a live webinar and you're relaxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Sweet. All right. Um, so just waiting on you guys. Um, if you're interested in learning more, make sure to throw that in the chat um, and we can uh, get moving on. Um, is this video um, online after? Yes, this video will be um, viewable on our YouTube channel afterwards. Um, so yeah, if you want to rewatch this and see all the uh, little gems that Clark was able to share, um, throughout the webinar, make sure to watch, rewatch this live stream. Um, and then also if you've, if you've registered for this live stream, um, on appsheettraining.com, you'll get this, um, uh, live stream in your email inbox. Um, so you can reference it there. Um, and the way to register for that is appsheettraining.com slash live stream. Um, if you want to register for our webinars. Yeah, unfortunately, DJ Flex Kid. Yeah, webinars are monthly now. That's uh, right. Yeah, we we didn't get as much support as we wanted, so now we have to. <laughs> no, we uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm just super busy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a lot of time commitment mm -hmm. uh, to kind of put these things on, um, mm -hmm. and because they are free, uh, you know, this is not something that I'm getting paid for, right? So it's it's. Uh, it's, it's harder for us to make commitments for this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but helping out, uh, if you want to like and subscribe to all of our videos, just go yes. down the line. Yep. If you leave us a comment, tell us that we're awesome. Tell yeah. Austin that he has weird hair and uh, he looks like a Jerry. You know, That's usually how I comment. I just send him a text every morning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah, we're sad that the weekly webinars um, that we're doing monthly ones now, but um, the goal is to give you guys more quality content. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to make these webinars um, a lot more robust to help you um, get the most out of building with us and building on the AppSheet platform. Um, so even though they're now moving into the monthly um, version, um, we're gonna make sure we pack them with high quality content um, and giving you really valuable information um, throughout the throughout the live stream. Sweet. Thank you, DJ Flex. <laughs> uh, Austin, are you going to share the Google Sheet as well? The Google Sheet. Yes, it should be shared. Um, so you should be able to access that um, um, as long as you have the quick reference guide and you've copied and customized the, the app, you should be able to access that um, Google Sheet as well. Great question. Sweet. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Um, that way we um, get you guys the information you need. It sounds like we got some people interested in learning more. So if you haven't been with us before, how it works with AppSheet Training, um, you're going to sign up for that free account. And we have a growing community of over 4,000 subscribers. So we are super excited about the AppSheet uh, no-code uh, community. And we want to uh, bring you guys on board with us and really learn how to use this tool that's gonna be really revolutionizing a lot of different industries, creating more efficient workflows for businesses um, across across the world. Um, we have innovative tools like AppSheet Toolbox. You kind of saw Clark demo this tool earlier in the webinar. Um, it's great for viewing the schema of your data. That way you don't have to go back to the Google Sheets every time um, you're trying to search for things um, and just really create expressions on the fly. Um, this is a great tool to, to use for that. And then um, if you're ready to upgrade to pro subscription, you can do that as well and access the leading um, training for um, learning how to develop on AppSheet. Um, so let's keep on moving. Uh, with our simple plan, we have those webinars, we have the AppSheet toolbox, IQs, and the blogs and articles. Again, our webinars are now moving to that monthly timeframe, um, but the, these are free to sign up for. Um, so make sure you go over to appsheettraining.com to sign up for your free profile. Um, and then for our professional plan, um, you can get everything in community. 
you're going to get that fully immersive learning experience. So these new courses are going to be added every month. Um, so along with a uh, monthly webinar, we're also going to release a new course every month. So if you're on that professional subscription, you get access um, to those professional courses. These are full walkthroughs along with um, very detailed labs and um, other great resources to help you uh, build on AppSheet fluently. Um, and so as we're seeing more AppSheet projects come through our pipeline, um, there's gonna be lots of demand for AppSheet developers. So make sure you're getting up to speed with how to create on this platform and even utilize this platform in your own day-to-day -day activities. Um, because as businesses are growing and you're, uh, we're trying to innovate and uh, create more um, automated processes for our different workflows. Um, this is going to be a much needed skill um, in the workplace. Um, we also have our AppSheet certification. Um, so if you're looking to land more clients and create more um, demand for your services, that AppSheet certification is a great way uh, to represent yourself as a certified uh, business developer. And then we also have 15% off our consulting. So if you want to chat with Clark about specific features that you need for your apps, you can sign up for consulting with him. Um, so you, you also get a seven day uh, free trial and you can subscribe today. Um, so what you're going to get is we have all these courses currently available. This is going to be a total value of over a thousand dollars. And so we used to sell these courses um, separately. Uh, but now you can get it all packaged into one in our pro subscription. Um, this is a course that we're highlighting today. This is great for the automotive industry. So this is AppSheet development in the fast lane. The great thing about this course is you're going to get access to a vehicle inspection app. So maybe you need, um, you've downloaded the inventory app, and now you also want another app to kind of take those uh, vehicle inspection reports um, for, for your um, auto repair shop. Um, this is a great course that gives you that app template and also it has a full walkthrough of how to design this app. Um, we also have our certification, which has a total value of $39. You, um, the kind of certificate, excuse me, certification details are about 90 minutes in length. You can export this to LinkedIn. 80% is passing and you're going to become a leader in business automation. And again, we have our app sheet consultants available. Um, Clark is one of those, and we have a whole team of uh, consultants that can quickly help you get your apps up to speed and uh, see those best practices on how to structure data and then how to create those uh, user-friendly experiences within AppSheet. So that way users, when they open their, uh, their business app, they're ready to you know, uh, load that data in and get to work um, quickly and efficiently. Um, so this is a one-on-one -on -one service, about one hour sessions, and then you can build your app with a professional app sheet developer. So here's our featured course for the week. Um, again, this will be included in your pro subscription. So it has three learning modules, a custom app template, customized Google Doc template. So you saw um, quickly how uh, Clark set up that email automation. Um, this one has an even more robust um, template that um, you will get details on how to build that on your own. Um, we're also gonna talk about data structure, UX design, and there's many more items in there to help you build on AppSheet quickly and efficiently. Our friend Ed Constantine, um, he says that he is learning by doing and he's building an initial set of 12 apps with his own hands. He's scheduled two hour coaching sessions with Craig twice a week um, where he's able to share his screen on Google Meet and um, he works on things that he needs help with. It fits his model of learning and he's making great progress. Um, so Craig- and I've, is, I've met with, I've met with Ed. He's yeah. an awesome guy. He, he, uh, he's, he's a fun one. He's a fun client. He, yeah. he has a lot of cool ideas. Um, yeah. So thanks Ed for, you know, joining our team. Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, so if, if you're like Ed, if you have some apps that you're ready to create for your business, please sign up for a tech talk with us. We can get you set up with one of our developers and really help um, you innovate your business and land more deals uh, get more clients and start really structuring your business processes in the most efficient way possible. Um, so kind of recapping all of the um, items that you'll get for your pro subscription has a total value of over a thousand dollars and you get that seven day free trial. So you don't really have anything to lose by signing up for that professional subscription. Um, so, um, again, wrapping it all up, 
we have our um, pro subscription. You can get started today um, at apsutraining.com for $39 a month. We can go ahead and start our timer. If you do have questions, um, leave them in the comments below. We're gonna have a special event on July 1st and it's simplifying work with AppSheet Automations. So remember, every time we have a special event, we are going to be releasing a new AppSheet training course. So if you're on that, on that pro subscription, you're um, gonna have um, access to this course. So any course that gets added to apsheetraining.com, you're going to have um, automatic access to that course. Um, also, um, I want to mention our tech talks. If you sign up for a tech talk with us, um, you can meet with our team and learn about our services. So that's anything from development to consulting to understanding our training um, on apsheetraining.com. Um, and we would love to meet with you and chat with you and even help you problem solve um, a few um, features in your app. Um, so, all right, I will uh, go to the chat and see if we have any questions. Um, and then I have a few questions here myself, but I'll make sure um, to see if there's any questions here in the chat first. Awesome. All right. Um, so which course should I start with? Um, the course that I recommend starting with is going to be that um, that fast lane, AppSheet in the fast lane course. Um, that course is really geared towards getting you up to speed quickly on data structure, creating custom views, and then creating those email automations. Um, if you want uh, more of a full length version of a full app development process, then you're going to want to take AppSheet Essentials. Um, that that's our uh, boot camp, and it's going to teach you, you know, the full length, the full scope with labs, uh, tutorials, video tutorials, um, PDF downloads, and just a plethora of information on how to build on AppSheet. So those are kind of the two courses I would start with, and then you can move up to advanced expressions, logic and expressions, um, and all the courses that kind of go into the more detailed. Um, oriented features of how to, how to use AppSheet. All right. And then which courses come with an app template? That's going to be our, um, let's see, the vehicle inspection course, which has been renamed to our um, AppSheet in the Fastlane course, our AppSheet Essentials course, and then Logic and Expression courses also have our templates as well. All right. And our next question is, will I be able to build my own app after taking these courses? And the answer to this is, of course. Um, that's why we built these courses. Um, they're geared to help you guys um, build apps on your own. Um, my biggest thing uh, in the app development process is I want to be able to generalize the skills um, from seeing somebody else build an app to um, taking those um, those skills and transferring them into my own app builds. So these courses are built with that in mind to help you um, really retain that information and use it for your own use cases. And then who can you contact for more information? Um, you can contact me, but you can also set up your meetings with Kale. Um, and um, his Tech Talk link is in the description below. So if you would like to set up a meeting with him, um, you can schedule a Tech Talk um, on whenever he has availability on his um, calendar. Um, and then he can get you set up with one of our developers. All right, let's see. I think that might be all the questions. All right. Um, well, I just wanna thank everyone for joining our live stream today. Um, and as we're counting down, I think we've gotten through all the questions um, and make sure to save the date for July 1st at 10 a.m. And thank you guys again for Join in AppSheetTraining.com um, with our inventory app for the auto industry today. Hope you guys have a great one. We'll see you around.